at the the very start of our Omicron um, outbreak, you know, cases are starting to rise. And I think that, you know, they're bigger than we've ever seen during this um, whole pandemic. So people are starting to, to worry. Um, and we're moving into a, a new um, phase of how we're going to do contact tracing. So it's very soon going to overwhelm the actual contact tracers. And so there's a move to more electronic means of, um, you know, of keeping tabs on people and, and uh, reaching out to people, uh, but also using more rapid antigen tests instead of PCR tests uh, and changing the um, amount of time that people will be isolating for. So shortening that a little. How are New Zealanders feeling about it? It's, of course, quite different to what they are used to, even though you're now following a lot of what the rest of the world has been doing. Yeah, well, I guess we've had a few months to get used to the idea that we weren't following an elimination strategy anymore. Um, I think New Zealanders probably don't really have a... Um, a really good idea of what's about to come. I feel like many of us who've been watching, you know, both the rest of the world, but also um, how Australia's uh, dealt with things, uh, you know, kind of have some idea. I guess the really important thing is that our government have also been watching what's happened in other places uh, and are trying to adapt our response to try and mitigate some of the things that we've seen happen overseas. So, for example, the changes that are coming into our contact tracing uh, and the amount of time that people need to spend in isolation really comes from watching what's happened in Australia with, uh, you know, big pressure being put on supply chains um, and lots of people isolating, you know, uh, stopping whole workplaces and workforces from, um, from being able to function. New Zealanders are highly vaccinated, but there are more vulnerable communities that are not and people who are perhaps economically not able to manage this news phase as easily. Yeah, and I think this is what concerns me, you know, about both the response now, but also the pandemic in general, is that, you know, we've seen that as case numbers rise, you know, people will change their behaviour and those that are able to isolate more, you know, uh, to protect themselves will do that. You know, they might stop out going, stop going to hospitality and things. But obviously those uh, people who are not so privileged, you know, who either have to go to work, can't isolate you know, don't have jobs where they can work from home, end up being those who are, are, are more vulnerable to getting infected. So I imagine we will see that in our case numbers too. What do you make of it more globally in terms of now what we're thinking about living with COVID? People are moving about more freely. Do you think it's premature at this stage of the pandemic? Oh, look, you know... <laughs> What's really disappointing is we have, you know, many tools to, to stop transmission or at least slow it down massively. And many countries um, that have those tools are not using them effectively. And then, of course, the tools are not being made available to many countries in the world, like, you know, vaccines. Um, and the really sad thing about that is the more transmission we have, the more, uh, you know, the more the virus will, uh, will mutate, will evolve, and the more we will have these new variants. So, there, you know, what we need to be doing is using all these tools that we have, using masks, using vaccines, and making sure that they're available to everybody. Because, you know, there is no going back to the way things were. Um, and it's very sad that the approach that the world is taking really, you know, is, is means that different communities are bearing the brunt of the consequences of those decisions really differently. And do you think it makes us more vulnerable for new variants that could, in fact, create more havoc down the, down the track? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the way the virus is mutating, it's it's essentially chance uh, chance changes that, that, that are made in the virus. And if they give the virus an advantage, those are the ones that will take off. And so there's no guarantee that the next variant of concern will be something that causes, you know, um, a less mild disease or that or so rather a milder disease. Um, or, you know, that, that um, uh, still we would still have good protection from our vaccines. You know, there's no guarantee of that. What have you made of what appears to be a global fatigue at the length of the pandemic and the very strict measures that have been put in place? We saw widespread protests start in Canada now. There's been a flow in effect in New Zealand. Well, we know that there's been, you know, misinformation that has, uh, you know, started at the very, very beginning of the pandemic. You know, as someone who's been communicating about COVID-19 since the very beginning, my inbox has been filled <laughs> with all sorts of emails from people with all manner of, of beliefs. Those, um, you know, those concerns that people have had um, and, the, and those beliefs have really been uh, taken advantage of by groups that are pushing, uh, you know, their own agendas. Um, and because of the internet, because of, you know, the connectivity of people, you know, we now have a group of people who are essentially living in an alternate reality, really. Um, and it's just, you know, the... 
what can we do? <laughs> you know, it's it's really difficult. I guess the one thing I would say is that it's on all of us to, you know, connect with the people in our lives and to try and and bring them um, uh, back from some of the, the really ridiculous and dangerous things that they believe. You know, we're not going to get through this by getting rid of all of the public health interventions that we know will help protect people, right? Um, so if we do want to come through this pandemic, we need to be using all the tools we've had, not throwing them all away. So do you think, uh, really, governments have no choice but to really hold the line when it comes to many of these measures? Absolutely. You know, we have lots of public health measures for other things so uh, that we that we don't throw away, that we still use. I mean, I guess we need to bring everybody, um, you know, back on side. But we, what we really need is a, is a global movement for how do we move, um, you know, on from the pandemic? How do we get everybody, you know, vaccinated? How do we get masks to everybody? You know, this It's very, very difficult, as we're finding, you know, to deal with an airborne virus. But we do have tools and we need to use them well. But unfortunately, we face, you know, um, a difficult uh, situation where people are preying on, you know, people's beliefs, people's fears, um, trying to give them an easy solution. Um, and there is no, there is no easy solution. This is going to be hard work, but we can do it. Susie, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.